I'm trying to get through this. <laughs> I know y'all ready to eat. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are pivotal moments in life where God allows things to happen in order to break you and bring you back or to bring you to him. Regardless of how you're living or the things that you have done, God's grace is greater than all. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. He doesn't want bad for us. He only wants good. And Matthew 7, 11 proves that. I think she got up there somewhere. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to you, those who ask him? Um, February 9th was the evening of my wreck. I decided to ride my motorcycle home from work that day. Um, I rode up there one day, and it, it rained, and it was, uh, it was like it was February. Uh, Feb- I rode in January, and it was up there till February 9th. And... Uh, they were stacking stuff around my bike and stuff, and I was like, man, i got to get this thing out of here. So I decided to ride it home that day, and um, I tried to go, call Jess to tell her, uh, but she didn't answer. So I jumped on the bike, did a little burnout because that's a normal day to me. That, that's how I'd leave. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't nothing different. Um, I, don't, I don't remember anything from the actual accident but because of a concussion. But I do remember after the accident, I was, you know, there was a guy that he was asking for a number to call someone. I was like, man, just grab my cell phone out of my pocket. And he's like, well, I did, and it's, it's all busted up. He's like, I can't read anything. So he's like, do you know anyone's number? I was like, nah, nah. And I started thinking. I was like, I know, I know my father-in-law's number. I was like, it ain't nothing's wrong with me. I was like, don't, don't be telling people that there's something wrong. I, I just forgot. And um, so I told, I told him Byron's number, and he called Byron. And uh, that's the last thing I remember till I was in the hospital and woke up with four to six doctors around me. And I was like, well, what happened? And they said, well, you've been in a motorcycle accident. And I said, well, am I okay? And they said, well, you hurt pretty bad. And I said, well, wh- what's wrong? And well, the one doctor said, well, you broke your back. And I asked him, I said, well, I'll be able to walk again. And he said, we do not know. And I said, so, you know, that you just you don't know. Then from that moment, I went in and out of uh, consciousness, and I, I kept asking for Jessica. And uh, when I finally saw her, I, I could feel it. I felt one tear run down my face. And uh, she, told, you know, she told me what, what happened. And after that, I figured out, you know, I was driving down 150, and a car had pulled out in front of me. And they just stopped, and they got in the center of the road, and they just stopped. And from what I can gather, I, um, I slammed on brakes and slid for 65 feet. And the last two feet of the, the black mark hooks to the left, and that's where I went to try to lay it down. Then the bike went to high side, and me trying to save the motorcycle all I could, I put my foot down, and that's when I think it dislocated my hip and broke the ball off my femur. And uh, so all the, the total injuries was the, my dislocated hip, the ball of my femur. Had, it actually shattered a partially collapsed lung, internal bleeding in my back, five broken ribs, uh, six fractured vertebrae in my back, uh, bruised kidneys, a uh, broken tooth, and several cuts and scrapes. The night of the accident, they didn't, before they gave me any uh, kind of medication, the doctors put a pin through my knee and put me into traction. This was to put the hip back into place. I also told my wife uh, they need to do surgery on my femur, femur as soon as possible because the longer the bone fragments were floating around, they were suffocating and not getting any blood flowing to them. And if they floated around too long, they would die and they would not be able to put the hip back together. And at that moment, it was looking like the surgery was going to be uh, around five days before they could do it, and they, they were unsure of if they were be able to save the actual bone. So that's when God started really moving. And um, then eternal bleeding miraculously stopped that night so they could get me in surgery the next day. 
And then, Lord and behold, the, the uh, it opened up where I was able to get in that morning. So every every minute mattered at that point because it lessened the chance of survival for the hip. And um, a hip replacement from someone at my age is not a good thing because by the time I would be 50, I wouldn't they wouldn't have enough bone to actually be able to do another hip replacement. So I'd be permanently in a wheelchair. Um, let's see. The surgeon told my wife the next day that they would have to open up my hip to see what it looked like, to see if there was e- even anything they could do. And when they did, they found out there was a 20% chance that the surgery would work. So they put all the pieces they could together. My hip, my legs are like a half inch shorter now because of the bone that they just could not get back in there. I stayed in ICU for uh, two days. Uh, then was able to go to the trauma unit. On February 13th, I got to go home, even though the trauma doctors told me I'd probably be there five more days. Um, the doctors had been calling me their store pupil because they were amazed at my progress. I, I had to walk. I think they came to me and they said, uh, to, I said, what do I have to do to be able to get out of here? I feel, I feel a lot better. And they said, well, you, if you would pee in this on your own, in, in this cup, and if you could walk with the walker, you can leave today. So I did that, and I was able to go. And uh, thank God, you know, he put us in a situation where Jess could take more time off work to take care of me because, you know, most most of the time, I don't know what we would have done, but uh, she was able, people from her work actually donated uh, paid time off so she could be there. Then... Uh, her her job seemed random at the time, but she she was working in hospital billing, so she had a lot of knowledge that we were able to figure out things like there was one thing where we weren't going to have any of our hospital pay, uh, bills paid because they said that if there's a 1% chance that it was my fault on the accident, that they would uh, not have to pay anything. It only has to be a 1% chance. It's called the no contact clause, and... Um, Thank God someone had told her that she needed to call because we had lawyers and they obviously couldn't figure it out, but she called the uh, ambulance, whatever it is, company, and uh, they they told her that there was one person that reported that I did make contact with the vehicle. So that allowed our insurance to be able to take over and pay because the woman that hit, that pulled out in front of me actually had minimum coverage which is a bad thing, so if you got, I need to fix that. So if you do hit somebody, you, they can be taken care of. But um, so on February 16th, the, the bruised areas, the ribs, the broken vertebrae started really hurting. Jess had to keep a journal of all the medicine she was giving me, uh, blood thinner shots every day, so I couldn't wouldn't get a blood clot as I was laying around. I wasn't able to put uh, weight on my leg for three months and was in a wheelchair, so I had to relearn how to walk and physical therapy months later. I had numerous checkups. There were x-rays to look for more blood flow, more blood flow. They were, you know, each visit, someone would show that that she would say, like, one thing, and you'd you'd go, oh, okay, everything's getting better. The next time, it would be, like, the totally opposite, that nothing's changed. And um, they said that there was a chance that the top of the ball of my femur would slide off because of the angle it was at. So the screw, if the screws backed out too much, that it, it it would just be starting all over. And um, finally, a year and a half after the a miracle happened, where we were able to see that the surgery had worked and that God fused the bone fragments together, I wasn't going to ha- have to have a hip replacement. Two years after the accident, I was able to have another surgery to remove three screws because the bone was strong enough. Thank God, because once again, they they had told me that they did not know if this was going to work. We're still believing that this is going to be the end because they still said down the road that it could develop enough pain where I would have to have a hip replacement, that this was just a temporary thing prolonging the uh, the time of not having to have the hip replacement. Um, so right after I got, I think it was about three weeks after I got out of the hospital, um, I started working in my father-in-law Byron's shop to build a big order of fuel cells we had. And from that, 
so I was doing fabrication there, and one of my buddies would help me out, and he would get so close to hitting a motorcycle in Byron's shop, it would be like, oh, God, if we do that, there goes all the profits. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's actually in Byron's shop right there where we did, I think I built 80 tanks that first time in a wheelchair. Of course, uh, Byron, he, he would come down there for no charge. He would help. Uh, then... So after we were worried about, you know, hitting the motorcycles and stuff, I told I told Jessica, I was like, we got to build a shop. So we built a shop at my house, and um, me and Banks would actually ride, we'd ride down the hill, and uh, on a, both of us on pedal big wheels, and I was still recovering, so we'd go to push him back up, and it seemed like you'd have 30 seconds of fun to 20 minutes of walking, and it was just like, man, this is terrible. And um, so we, I told Jessica, I was like, I'm going to put a motor on one. And she was she was like, uh, that sounds kind of crazy. And I was like, well, I was like, I think I think it'd be cool. And uh, I ended up telling a guy I worked with about it. He said, well, if you did, I'd buy one. So ended up building that first one, which is actually that one right there. And um, we took it to a car show in Winston. And from there, it got in the Winston-Salem Journal. And that's a, yeah, that's a picture from the he- – it's called the Heavy Rebels, the car show. And um, when Sam Journal put that in there, and they, a guy from Hot Rod Magazine saw that and put it in Hot Rod Magazine. So we got so busy that uh, I was like, I needed to quit my job that I couldn't do both. Um, uh, so I think, I want to say it was about a year ago, uh, Lena came to me and said, we're in the old building at the old church, so it might have been a little bit longer, but she came to me and said that she don't normally do stuff like this, but she feels like God is telling her to tell me that uh, the power is in my feet. And I was like, okay. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if it was something to do with how I walk because I walk on the ball of, ball of my feet now sometimes. And uh, I told Jessica, I was like, I think it's got to do with going out of my own. She's like, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think that's what it is. And it wasn't until probably a few months ago we were looking back and like, that's what it was about, that um, I finally took that step, the step out of my own, and, you know, now we're in a 9,000-square-foot building. We have six employees. Uh, we got a family business. There's uh, there, We don't have too much drama, so that's a good thing. But <laughs> this is what we're, we're building. We build uh, uh, big wheels for adults uh, and for some kids. <laughs> but, you know, since then, we've, it's, it's been amazing what's, what God has done. I'm trying to constantly remember to keep God first from every every way He's blessed us, and uh, we've had. I mean, now we've built we've built big wheels for. There's the count from Counts Customs is a show called Counting Cars. We flew out to Vegas, built you know we built them I think six big wheels total. We've done um, we did one for Tyler Hubbard for Florida Georgia Line. He's a country singer. If you listen to country. Um, we did. We've done them for several football players. There's one of them we did for his nickname's Kid Rid. He's uh, Stephen Ridley. He plays for. He was playing for the Patriots. I, I hadn't kept up with him, so I don't know who he's playing for now. We did. Um, we did two for Michael Yapati. Um I mean, it's it's been amazing the where it's taken us from something that a lot of people thought was kind of crazy to how it is now. And uh, because of the business, this business from what God has done for us, the people that's hanging on the coattails, that's copied us and whatever else are able to make money. So it's not just us, it's a whole bunch of people able to make money from this one thing that God took that was negative in my life to a positive. So, but that's all I got. (laughs) Thank you. Somebody